Well, we have to, you know, again, we'll, we'll look at the heat equation. And we have derivatives in there, and we have to come up with a way to approximate those derivatives. All right. So what is a derivative? Like, If I ask you what is a derivative in words, you know, tell me in words what a derivative is. It's the yeah, rate of change of what? In, let's say in, this is a one-dimensional equation, right? So 1D, you know, we're just really talking about lines, right? right? So it's the slope, specifically, it's the slope of a line that's tangent to a point, right? So it's the, it's obviously, clearly, the derivative of this changes as I, as I go along, but the, as I, you know, at any given point, Right? So the, in other words, what I was saying is the derivative is a function. But at any given point, say I have a point xi, right? then the derivative is the slope of that point. Okay? And so, the, the problem is, how many points do you need to define a line? So if I ask you what, if I ask you what the derivative at a point is, but I don't give you what the function is, what do you do? I mean, how many points do you need to define a line? Two, right? So one way I might do it is if I choose another point that's really close to the first point. Right? If I choose a point that's really close to the first point, call it say x i plus one. Then I can write a line between those two points and then would compute the slope of that line. Right? And of course, this will approach the real derivative in the limit. Well, I mean, let me just write the equation. So, so if this is pressure and this is x, then the approximation to the pressure as a function of x would be the pressure evaluated at p x plus 1 minus p x i, i plus 1 minus p x i, all over x i plus 1 minus x i. Or a lot of times we'll just call that delta x. And of course, this becomes, you know, this is only the, actually the derivative, or it's a, it's a good approximation of the derivative as delta x becomes small. Right? So this is essentially at the root of what we're going to do in a computer. Okay? And this, this, is, this is called a forward difference approximation. So in a, in a forward, it's called forward difference because, you know, we, we were sitting at xi and we looked forward to xi plus 1, right? We looked forward to xi plus 1 to evaluate the function at that point to compute the derivative. We also could have looked backwards, right? We could have looked backwards to, say, the point xi minus 1. And if we would have done that, that would be a backwards difference approximation. And then there's also one that's called central difference. And so in the central difference, we would look forward and backward. Right? And so we'll talk about each of these. Uh, each of these have different um, errors. And the error comes from the fact, and we'll, we'll see here in just a second where the error comes from. But the, the error comes from the essentially the, no, the, the thing that we have to do in a computer, we have to use finite precision. We can't, you know, we can't make delta x infinitely small, right? Because we don't have infinite numbers. In a computer can only stores a finite number of numbers, right? right? When you, so when you, when you type pi in MATLAB, 
right? It, it pi is clearly an infinite number. It, it can't compute that, right? It, it, can or it can only store a certain amount of pi, right? So it's an approximation, and, and, and it's um, that approximation or that, that amount of numbers it can store, the error associated with, the, with that is called a mach machine precision. So it's, it's associated with the type of architecture of the computer we're, we're working with. And also, just, just so you know, if delta, remember delta x is, is, is also defines the difference in the function, right? And so just be aware, if delta x is really, really small, so say I, say I chose it in a computer to be like 1 e to the minus 100, okay? And I evaluate the function, okay? Evaluate the function, and I get a number, and then I move over a distance, you know, e to the minus 100 next to it, and I evaluate the function again. So I have two functional evaluations at two points x that are really, really close to one another, and now I subtract them. What am I going to get? What's the difference in two numbers that are really, really close to a number in a, in a computer? It's going to be. 0.0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
P to the X. I'm just going to write delta x here. Plus dot, 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 or higher order terms. Okay? So this, if, if we choose to only use the first term as an approximation, so if we say that the approximation of that derivative is equal to this, I'll just write delta x, which is, which is what we did at the beginning graphically, right, from the picture, we derived the same equation. Here we derived it from a Taylor series expansion, okay? Um, but here, the Taylor series expansion gives us a little more insight into what the error is, okay? Because you know, we're only keeping this term and we're throwing away all of these, right? And so what these dot, dot, dots represent, of course, is, you know, they're going to be terms that are on the order here of x squared and on the order here of x cubed. What is that? Right? So what we'll do is we'll say, you know, any terms out here are going to be smaller than this one, right? So they're going to, you know, X, if I have delta x and then here I have something that's proportional to delta x squared, it's smaller than that. And if I have something that's proportional to delta, delta x cubed, it's smaller than that. If I assume that delta x is a small number, right? Yeah. So why can't you just on that first uh, No, I just used the Taylor series. Right? The, the yeah. first the, the equation of f is you can go look in your calculus book. That's the equation for a Taylor series, right? Mm -hmm. So I just rewrote that in terms of the, the same equation essentially in terms of p, but about about the point x i plus my plus one, right? And so then I just sub, you know I just subtract this to the other side, subtract that to the other side and divide by delta x, and that leaves me with that guy, p prime. I just solved this equation for p prime, p prime, right? And yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the point is, right, yeah, so you have all these higher order terms. They're all smaller than this one, okay? So what we do is we're going to say that our error is on the order of this term, right? And so we use the big O notation, right? So then we say, you know, plus order delta x. Right. So that means that if it's if if it's the, on the order of delta x, if we cut delta x in half, we cut our error in half. If we cut cut it by ten, we cut it, the error by ten. Okay. Now we'll, we'll go on to look at other methods that have error on the order of x squared. Right? And so then if we cut it in half, we get a faster, you know, we, we cut our, if we cut the, if it's x squared and we cut x by half, then we cut the error by four, right? And then we, we get, continually get an exponential type reduction in error. All right, so the technique we're going to use to solve those PDEs in this class, and, and please know it's not the only technique you can use, okay, but the, the technique we're going to use in this class is finite differences, okay. 
So of course, in our heat equation, we have a second derivative, right? So we need this is ju this is just an approximation of the first derivative, right? So we need to figure out how we're going to come up with a second derivative, and we'll talk about that next time, or Dr. Balhoff will, because he'll be here for, uh, next Tuesday. All right.